Let's go ahead and review the steps to node analysis before we do an example. When analyzing a circuit using node analysis, the very first thing you do is identify the extraordinary or critical nodes in the circuit. Then choose one of those nodes to be the reference node where the voltage is going to be zero. Assign variable names to the other extraordinary nodes. Then write Kirchhoff's current law or KCL equations at each of the other nodes in terms of the node voltage variables. And then finally, solve the system of equations that result from there. Let's take this circuit for example. We have three critical or extraordinary nodes. We've got one right here, we've got another one here, and then of course we've got this bottom one. Now consistent with our convention of choosing the reference node to be that node tied to the negative terminal of your voltage source, let's then specify this as our reference and say that V equals zero there. Now because the voltage source, this 15 volt source, is tied directly to our reference, we know then that the voltage right there is 15 volts. Starting at zero, climbing up 15, we're 15 volts above our reference. Now with that, let's go ahead and write two node equations, one at each of the nodes. Starting with, oh, first we need to assign variable names. Let's call this one V1, and let's call the voltage at this node V2 both of them referenced relative to our to the bottom node here. Alrighty, starting here at the left node, summing the currents, the current leaving that node going to the left is going to be equal to the current going through that resistor. The current through that resistor is equal to the voltage drop across that resistor divided by the resistance. So the voltage drop across that resistor going from right to left is going to be the voltage on the right hand side which is V1 minus the voltage on the left hand side which is 15 volts and the current then is going to be that voltage drop divided by 5 ohms. The current coming down through this 20 ohm resistor is going to be the voltage across that resistor, which is V1 minus the voltage down here, which is 0. We're not going to write minus 0 very many times, but we'll do it this time just to show that it is there, divided by the resistance of 20 ohms. And then we're going to add in the current leaving this node going to the right, the current going to the right is going to be the voltage drop across that resistor, which is V1 minus V2, divided by 100 ohms. And the sum of those three currents, then, has to equal zero. Now, writing a node equation at the second node, we have the current leaving that node going to the left is going to be V2 minus V1, divided by 10 ohms. Let's just pop, or divided by 10 ohms. Oh my goodness. Up here that wasn't 100 ohms, that was a 10 ohm resistor. Let's just go ahead and correct that right now. Now, down here we've got the current leaving the node going to the left is going to be V2 minus V1 divided by 10 ohms. And let's stop and notice that this term here for the current leaving node 2 going to the left is equal to the current leaving node 1 going to the right through that same resistor, with the exception that there is a sign difference. In this first equation, it was V1 minus V2 divided by 10. In the second equation, it is V2 minus V1 divided by 10. Same current, just referenced in opposite directions. Now, adding the current going down through the 15 ohm resistor, we have add plus V2 minus 0 divided by 15 plus, now, what is the current in this branch here? Well, we've got an independent current source telling us that we've got two amps entering this source, or entering this node here. So if it's entering by convention, we add a minus, or it'll be plus a minus 2, and the sum of those currents equals 0. So now we have th two equations in two unknowns. And with those two equations in two unknowns, we'll just go ahead and solve them. And start by collecting similar terms. In this first equation, we have three V1 terms and one V2 term and a constant. So factoring out the V1s, first of all, we'll have V1, we have V1 over 5, factor out the V1, that leaves us a 1 fifth, plus V1 over 20, factor out the V1, that leaves us a 1 twentieth, and finally, we have a one-tenth coming from that term right there. 
plus the V2 terms. There's only one V2 term, and it's a negative V2 over 10. So if I factor out a V2, I'm left with a negative 1 tenth there. Finally, we have the current or the uh, constant negative 15 divided by 5. Let's take it to the other side as a positive 15 divided by 5, or 3. Do the same thing to the second equation, where we've got our V1 terms. Well, there's only one V1 term. Negative V1 over 10. Factor out the V1. That leaves a negative 10 there. Plus V2 times, we've got two V2 terms. We've got V2 over 10 and V2 over 15. Factor out the V2s, and we're left with a 1 tenth plus a 1 fifteenth. Now we've got this minus 2 that we bring to the other side as a positive 2. After we combine those fractions by finding the common denominators, we're left with, and we'll just write it up here, V1 times 7 twentieths plus V2 times a negative 1 tenth equals 3. In the second equation, we have V1 times a negative 1 tenth plus V2 times 1 fifteenth plus 1 tenth is 5 thirtieths, which is the same thing as 1 sixth, and that equals 2. Now, take that system of two equations and two unknowns, plug it into your calculator, your matrix solver, and when you do, you will get that V1 is equal to 14.48 volts, and V2 is equal to 20.69 volts. Now, what does that mean? That our two voltages, our two nodes have voltages, or the voltages at the two nodes are V1 then is equal to 14.48 volts, V2 is equal to 20.69 volts, and from those two quantities, we can calculate any other branch current or branch voltage in this circuit that we're interested in. For example, the voltage across this 20 ohm resistor is just voltage of V1 minus 0. The voltage across that 20 ohm resistor is just V1, or 14.48 volts. Thus, the current coming down there, let's call it I20, I20 is just going to be the voltage V1, 14.48, divided by 20. Similarly, we can count the, calculate the voltage across this 10 ohm resistor as being V1 minus V2. The voltage from here to here, call it V12, is going to equal, voltage V1 is 14.48 minus V2, which is 20.69. That equals negative 6.21 volts, and then the current flowing through that 10 ohm resistor from V1 to V2, call it I10, that's going to equal, I10 then is going to be the voltage across that 10 ohm resistor, which is negative 6.21 volts, negative 6.21 volts, divided by the 10 ohm resistor is equal to a negative 0.621 amps. What does that negative mean in there? Well, we define the current as going left to right, and that current going left to right is a negative 0.621 amps, which means, in fact, that the current is actually flowing from right to left, from V2 to V1, with a magnitude of 0.621 amps. And that makes sense. Since V2 is larger than V1, we'd expect the current to be flowing, the actual current flow, to be going from right to left.